The national flag flies proudly beside the childhood home of the right excellent Norman Washington Manley, symbolizing his status as a national hero and his contribution to Jamaica's journey to nationhood. His involvement in the country's campaign to independence was rooted in his resentment of the lack of rights for the poor working class. He was a man who devoted much of his life to looking after what we call the underdog. That was one of the things which drove him relentlessly as a political leader. And his advocacy, which had begun years earlier, took on a more defined role when he rose to lead the newly formed People's National Party in 1938. We have to see uh, Norman Manley's role in 1938 as a period in which he demonstrated his capacity for reconciliation and negotiation. He was in touch with the governor, in touch with the unions, in touch with the business people. He, his characteristic was trying to reconcile and bring together the contending forces and arrive at a solution to the issues. As a statesman, Manley refused to be satisfied with the universal adult suffrage in 1944. He had bigger dreams, among them to see Jamaica take full control of its own affairs. So he became deeply involved in the move to develop a new constitution and the fight for full independence from Britain. Norman Manley believed that the organization of the people in the political parties would be the instrument through or the vehicle through which Jamaica would be able to decolonize itself from the dominance of British rule. So the Constitution basically was an attempt to put in writing what is unwritten in British. The British Constitution is not a single document. This is referred to as unwritten, but that's not entirely accurate. It's just that it's not codified in a single uh, document. We attempted to extract from British experience those principles that would then shape the Jamaican constitution. He tried to get a constitution that would reflect both the aspirations of the Jamaican people, but would also allow for that system to operate in a harmonious way that would ensure the full participation of the citizenry consistent with a parliamentary democracy. N.W. Manley was the consummate statesman and politician driven by his need to seek the welfare of the people. As leader of the People's National Party, he got his first taste of victory in 1955 when Jamaicans went to the polls. It was a vindication of all that he had campaigned for. He regarded it as a mandate to put in place programs that would result in the social transformation and the economic growth of Jamaica. The national hero and chief minister left an extensive legacy. In addition to his role in obtaining universal adult suffrage in 1944, N.W. Manley also founded the National Workers' Union in 1952. Two years later, in 1954, he led efforts to secure executive powers for elected representatives. Under the colonial system, elected officials, their power was balanced off by the nominated officials who the governor nominated. So that between 1944 and 1953, although Bustamante had won the election, he had no power because they, had, they were no ministers, as it were. It was also under Norman Manley's leadership that Jamaica achieved full internal self-government in 1959, a precursor to political independence that would come three years later. What that means is that 
we had responsibility for all the portfolios that dealt with internal developments. But the governor was still responsible for foreign affairs, for defense, and for justice. Under the independence, you, you um, are responsible now. You are managing your external affairs and determining who you trade with, who you have political relations with. And that's not determined by uh, Britain or by the governor in, as a representative of Britain in Jamaica. With Manley at the helm, the government established the Bank of Jamaica, the Development Bank of Jamaica, and the College of Arts, Science and Technology cast, now the University of Technology. And among the indelible contributions which he has made to the entire Jamaican society was the granting of 2,000 free places in secondary schools during the 1950s. And most of the professionals, the engineers, the doctors, the accountants, the lawyers, the public administrators, and so much of our creative talent was the direct product of that flowering of the opening of opportunity for all. His legacy also includes the Small Business Loan Board, the Jamaica Welfare Limited, now called the Social Development Commission, the Foundation of Youth Service, and the success in securing land tenure for farmers. Manley's dedicated service to Jamaica earned him the Order of National Hero, the highest award to be bestowed on a citizen. Norman Washington Manley led a busy and public life in service to his country. We know he was an athlete, soldier, and brilliant lawyer, but those who knew him admired him for other reasons. He also had a passion for outdoor life, so he liked horse riding and he would retreat um, to the hills where he was a master axeman and he did it not only for uh, physical fitness but for him to watch him cutting down a tree was a little short of a work of art. An avid reader and love of classical music he was also a fearless driver. Everyone knows, of course, he was a fast driver. And um, I can recall occasions coming home from meetings in the country when he would tell his driver, pull over, he would go to the wheel and sitting in the back seat, you would shut your eyes and pray that you would get home safely. Norman Manley was also a family man. He married his cousin Edna in 1921 and together they produced two boys. It was a close-knit family of achievers uh, with Edna Manley in the art world as a sculptor um, with but also very committed to politics and to the development of the nationalist movement because they saw themselves not simply as party people but as belonging to a national movement. And the boys, Douglas and Michael, followed in their father's footsteps. Douglas Manley tried to compete in the athletic sphere and broke his father's 100 yards record, which had been in existence for 30 years. And um, Michael Manley, the youngest son, uh, followed his father's footsteps in becoming party leader in 1969 and serving as Prime Minister of Jamaica for uh, two terms in the 1970s and one term after 1989. Undoubtedly, Norman Washington Manley was devoted to excellence, the fulfillment of purpose and the promotion of human dignity. He gave us a confidence in ourselves, a belief that there was nothing that Jamaicans could not achieve. Uh, no level of performance beyond their grasp. 
Revered as the father of the nation, Manley was an inspiring leader who touched the lives of Jamaicans home and abroad, making an indelible mark internationally and in the region. In his final speech in 1969, he asserted that the mission of his generation was to accomplish political power for the black masses of the people from which he sprang. Mission accomplished, he declared. And having accomplished his mission, Norman Washington Manley died on September 2, 1969.